Welcome again to another 30 minutes with the low who puts a high in your viewing entertainment. Appearing for us before our cameras today is an actress whose spryness and enthusiasm belie her actual years. A former star of different strokes and filthy rich, she is currently to be seen with Lee Majors in The Fall Guy. I speak of the ever young and irresistible Nidra Voles. Also with us today is a man who, although not known as a film critic, will tell you unequivocally that Manhattan melodrama was a deadly movie. That's right, he's the actor who played the title role in and rose to unequivocal stardom as Dillinger, the one and only Lawrence Tierney. And now, here's someone who would have preferred had the cowboy hero been named Skip Along Cassidy, <laughs> your man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. A band singer. I can't believe you were a band singer. I was young once, you, you know. You were a band course, singer, though. Of course. How many years ago was that? Oh, I hesitate to mention that. Was, really? Oh, it was 40, 50 years ago. I don't know, 50, 60, maybe. I don't know. Nidra Vols, tell me, how long really have you been in the business, show business? Really? Well, I was carried on the stage by my mother when I was six weeks old. And I'll soon be, uh, well, I'm not soon be 78. I'm 77 now. Next June, I'll be 78. Uh-huh. 78. Mm -hmm. God bless you, darling. That's wonderful. I'm having a ball. Yeah, but I understand right? that you were in a play in Upland, California a few years ago. Yeah. And there was a gentleman by the name of Dale Garrett. Yeah, Garrick. S Garrick? Yeah. He discovered you. Well, at, I... Did he or not? No, I don't think that's exactly the way it happened, uh -huh. Skip. Would you like me to tell you how it happened? Yes, I would. Well, as a matter of fact, there was a young gentleman working in the little theater there in Upland. Uh-huh. And he had Dale Garrick as his agent. Well, the man that I worked for is Mark Shipley. He has the gallery theater there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he liked what I did, and he gave me some really good parts, comedy. And uh, I got quite well established, and Mark thought that I had potential, could maybe make a couple of bucks in commercials or uh -huh. some little uh -huh. thing, you know. So he got this young man to take me in to Dale's office uh -huh. for an interview. I and, see. of course, it wasn't too difficult because I did have a background of theatrics, and uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. that's why Dale took me and in. And he signed you up, and, and but Norman, uh, I understand Norman, Norman Lear is the one really signed you up. Well, actually, Norman came into my life in the 75 uh -huh. when I was doing a bit on uh, Good Times, which, of course, is my favorite uh -huh. program. I always watched it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was rather uptight uh, between shows. You know, we do two takes. Uh, we do a show at 5.30 and then one at 8 o'clock right, with right. a live audience and all that. And I was sort of uptight because uh, I was real thrilled about network and with these wonderful people that I was going to work with and uh -huh. it was so exciting. Uh -huh. And so between shows, you go down in the green room or whatever mm -hmm. and they bring in food and they have notes and that type of thing. And uh, I couldn't have eaten, I probably would have been sick, you see. I see. So I was just nibbling on some celery or something and this man came up and he said, uh, you're doing a, a terrific job for us. I said, well, thank you, sir. And he said, no, I mean it. We're going to have you back. I said, well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> and when he left, uh, fortunately, he knew I was kidding, because when he left, I said to one of the fellows, who was that guy? And he said, that's Norman Lear. I said, uh-oh, oh, there goes my career. Mm. But that but he signed so. you up. Oh, yes. He's, a, he's a great Panther person. Uh -huh. you but know. your first movie was 10. Yeah, that was... Tell me about yeah. that. Blake Edwards. Blake Edwards. I had a wonderful interview with Blake. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't really think the, the mm -hmm. scene was all that funny. I mean, it was, eh, the dog running out of the room, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Was it? But what the old lady did, I think, was very funny. Uh -huh. But when I walked in Blake's office for the audition, the interview, he said, well, to begin with, you're much too young for the part. I said, I'm too young for the part? Too young, right. I've never been too young for anything. <laughs> he said, well, we can take care of that with makeup. And then he <clears> said, you don't have any dialogue. I just want you to shuffle across the floor. And mm -hmm. he showed me how he wanted me to shuffle. Uh -huh. And I said, Blake, I've walked like that all the time. He said, oh, good. Then he told me what the rest of the skit was, which if you saw the picture, you know what the old girl did, right, and the right. dog ran out of the room and so bit. And uh, he told me what the rest of the skit was, and I said, Blake, I, I'm not sure I can do that on cue. Mm -hmm. He said, well, we'll fake it. I said, oh, good. 
Nice. But it was, that's what happened. Nidra Vols. Now, what name, what kind of name is that, Nidra? Well, uh, Vols is a German name. That's my married name. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And my maiden name was Nidra Gordnier, which uh -huh. is French and German. And the name Nidra came from a book uh -huh. uh, by George Barr McCutcheon, an old writer. Oh, an see. old writer. Uh -huh. But you did a movie, Dust. In the lust, lust in, in the dust. The, yes, I. Yeah, I want to show that. Just yes. I love that picture. Look at this yes. picture of. My name was Edna. They call me Big Ed. Big Ed. Yeah, I was Can oldest you get that hooker and real Shilly close Birdie. Up that of, and see, I think that's a great. Oldest but, hooker and Shelly Birdie. The oldest hooker. You played mm -hmm. a hooker in that? Oh yeah. Did you really? Yeah. And that was with Tab Hunter. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. Caesar Romero. Lainey Kazan. But you have Divine. Divine, yes. Oh, yeah. Funny. Was he, is he funny? Oh, yes. Yeah. Is he? But tell me something about your new movie out. You have a new one out, Moving... Moving Violations. Well, it's been out. It came out about the same time, Lust in the Dust. Oh, it did? Uh-huh. But uh, they both disappeared sort of fast, uh, which I, I don't make any explanations about those uh -huh. things, because uh -huh. I don't know. But Moving Violations was a PG-13, uh -huh. and um, if it hadn't been for me, it wouldn't have to be a, even a 13. It wouldn't? Why would nope. it? Why wouldn't it Well, be? because I said the nastiest thing in the whole show. You, you did? Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, when they put it on television, uh -huh. they will use my version of the lines in the scene because it's permissible on television. You know what I'm going to bring to the, I want you to meet one of America's great bad men. I mean, he was Dillinger, the bad? original best. He was really bad. He was the, actually the Humphrey Bogart of his day. Ah. He was really considered the Humphrey Bogart of the 40s, I should say. Humphrey a rotten Bogart. guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's real a real rotten guy. Yeah, real rotten. No, but he's a sweetheart. Lawrence <laughs> Turney. How are you, Lawrence? How do you do? Larry, may I call you Larry? I guess you How have you that? been? My God. Scott Brady's brother, this is. Remember Scott Brady? Oh, yes, I do. Lawrence Turney. And, and did you know that Lawrence Turney does Shakespeare? He recites Shakespeare? No, no. Nobody knows that about Not you. now, though. No, but you do. Now, how did you get into Shakespeare? I didn't get into Shakespeare. Well, why? Okay, you didn't get into it. Tell me, uh, how do, uh, why do you recite Shakespeare? I don't. When did you hear me do this? Someone told me. Well, I know a few quotations. Most people do. Most actors know a little of it. Yes. Most people who read very much know a little Shakespeare. In fact, that's what made him so popular. He used so many popular expressions. Bart's attorney, tell me, what have you been doing with yourself? You just got a new... Uh... Well, I've been doing a lot of TV recently. I just finished uh, Hill Street Blues, and uh -huh. before that I did a uh, Tales of the Dark Side. That's right, you did. Uh, with Phyllis Diller. Uh-huh. When is that coming out? And before that I did, or right after that, between the two, I did uh, Remington Steel, neither of which has come out yet. Hill Street Blues has shown, uh -huh. but the other two haven't. Before that, I did a film with uh, Dino De Laurentiis in North Carolina, which is on the streets now. It's on the theaters now. What's the name of it? It's called The Silver Bullet. Oh, great movie, yes. The Stephen King thing uh -huh. about werewolves. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just bef uh, right after that, I did uh, Prince Cesano with uh, John Huston. Which yes, was tell me about John Pleasure. I'd wanted to work with him a long time. I'd always admired him. I think he's one of our best American directors. In fact, best directors in the world, I uh -huh, think. Uh -huh. I think he's a terrific director. He is a good director. Yeah, I had Michael Parks on the show. And a wonderful, nice guy. Same nice thing. Nice guy and very easy to work with and nice. Is he really easy to work I with? I work with a lot. I work with DeMille. Of course, he was easy to get along with, too. But uh, I found Houston a pleasure to work with. Do you think Hollywood has changed? And the picture just won a, the Golden uh, Lion Award in the Venice Film Festival. I just talked to Angelica Houston, uh, right. who's in the film with uh, Jack Nicholson. Uh, put these on her, mm -hmm. and uh, she just came back from Venice. Uh -huh. And I talked to her today, and she told me they won the Golden Lion Award for the best Did they picture really? How at that festival. Great. And she plays an excellent part in it. She does an excellent job. Uh -huh. Everyone talked about her before. Did you see it? No, I haven't. <clears> well, I heard it's great. She really surprised me and everybody else. I, uh -huh. She really, uh, she plays a tough Italian. T what, do you play in it? what do you play in it, John? Uh, I play a police lieutenant. You play a police lieutenant. I see. But you're always playing those tough guys. But Houston was, uh, oh, I play what they cast me in. San Quentin, that was, what done? What year was that done? In 19, San, uh, uh, the man of San Quentin. Or like that. Was it 47? No, 49. 49? And how about Born to Kill? Who was in that? Born to uh, Kill? Claire Trevor, Audrey Long, Philip Terry. Claire Trevor was in Born and to I'll Kill? I'll never forget this wonderful old woman who'd been in films for many, many years, Esther Howard. Esther? She was wonderful. She played an, an old, really old woman in the picture. Uh huh. And uh, she'd come in every morning with a 
was a big famous bottle of martini. Uh -huh. <laughs> the last during the day, and she was a lot of fun to work with. She'd been around many, many years as a young girl. I'd seen old time films, and I saw her walking around as a showgirl. Uh -huh. And she was so so nice to work with. Well. There was a lot of rumors around Hollywood about you. Now tell me about those rumors. Here they go Lawrence. with their rumors. Yeah, well, you know. First of all, let me let, let me let me preface whatever we're going to talk about go by ahead. telling you that rumor and gossip very rarely spoils a good story by sticking to the truth or any way near it. Right, go ahead. Uh, what's the rumors? The rumors that you were not a, you were the bad boy of Hollywood. I wasn't, well, what did I do bad, name it. Well, cab drivers, uh, wherever you no, went. you're gonna you start hallucinating. No, no, we're not gonna hallucinate. What about cab drivers? I just wanna know, I, let's get the record straight. Well, what's and, uh, cab drivers, I don't know. Well, it's, well, they used to have headlines in the paper that you used to grab cab drivers. No, that's a lot of nonsense. Is it really? Of somebody else. I don't know. I just. I never had anything like that. I never had a headline like that in the paper. It didn't. No. Well, you're confusing your your memoir, your memory of things. Are you all right now? I used you're to drink a lot. Yes, that's. And I used to get attacked by a lot of people in bars who would see me in these heavy TV roles. That's right. Uh, motion picture roles at that time. And they thought you were the Dillinger. You know, you well, kept. Well, they'd come up to you and say you're not as tough as you are in film. Right. And with a few drinks, you don't have the discretion to walk away from them. You just say, well, you know, yeah, back Look at you here. Look at you here. This is the hoodlum, one of the great movies. That's you. What year was this taken in? I don't know, isn't it there? It's there. It's a, here's another picture. Oh, this was right. made, this, made this, this in 1804. Look at that, you there. That's yeah. a great picture of you. Yeah, this that's is the same picture. Is this all you got? No, in? I have not. I have the kill or be Yeah, killed. that's a picture I did well, in let's, that. Well, let's show this on camera first. Look at that. Lawrence turning. I was in... Uh, Where is this? We did it in Portugal, Lisbon, around the area. But you made monogram studios, the King Brothers. I mean, you were responsible for the monogram pictures. Now, what Dillinger was made at monogram, is that correct? Yeah, monogram allied artists. I don't know. They Tell me about those monogram. days of Hollywood. Monogram. What do you want to know? I, just tell me, what's well, really Hollywood out, really like in those days? The town wasn't as densely populated as it is now. I came out on July 4th, 1943, under contract to RKO. That's, now, let me get right. 1943. Mm -hmm. Now, you were in New York City at the RKO. You went with some young man at RKO in New York City. No, I'll tell a, you that story. Tell me that story. Well, I was working as a lifeguard at the time, <clears throat> and I had been asked by someone to do some modeling. I got into that <clears throat> with the John Robert Powers agency. Mm -hmm. Just one day we were... Uh, you were with a friend of yours. Well, I'm going to tell you. Go ahead. We were set to go on an interview for a TV commercial, for a commercial, modeling commercial. Go ahead. <clears throat> and they wanted the two of us to go down, a guy named George Schaefer, a real nice guy. And he said, we have about two hours to get there. Let's share a cab while we go downtown to the interview. I said, fine. Then he said, by the way, since we have the time, we can go get coffee. <clears throat> and he said, uh, would you mind coming over to RKO Studios with me? Not, not the studios, but the offices. I'm working on getting a film contract. And he said, I just want to, I have an appointment there. Uh -huh. So I went over with him and I sat in the outer office. And when this Marion Robertson, who was a very nice woman, who was one of their casting directors, uh -huh. came out to bring him into her office, while he was in there, she uh, asked him who I was. And uh -huh. he told me I was another model. He told her. And so she asked to meet me, and I came in, and she said, uh, can you act? I said, are you an actor? I said, well, I think I can act. I always did. Mm -hmm. I used to watch them in films and say, well, you know, I, why can't I do that as well as anyone else? So she said, will you read for me? And I said, I can't have an appointment for an interview. And she said, well, uh, can you come back? So I went back, and later on I read for her. And I've always had the ability to read cold very well uh -huh. without a lot of previous study, and she liked my reading and had me read for Arthur Willie, who was her boss, and then they liked me. Then Ben Piazza came out. He was at RKO, the uh -huh. RKO head of casting, and mm -hmm. they signed me to a contract. Is that how that happened? And they brought you to Hollywood? I see. Do you know the movie I liked you did just recently, just a few years ago, with Li uh, Liza Minnelli? You were in Arthur. Oh, I just had a small part. But, but that was wonderful. Arthur, yes. You were wonderful in that. I must say, you played the drunk. Remember? No, I was not drunk. You weren't drunk? You were a bum? Uh, what was it? He played the drunk. Dudley Moore played the drunk. He was drunk all through the picture. Go ahead. I played a guy in the cafe or in, in the restaurant. In order, the restaurant. Ordering but... coffee in a roll. Okay. I wasn't drunk. Okay, I thought you were drunk, but I thought you were wonderful in that. Yeah, next thing you're going to tell me I'm drunk now. No, you're not drunk now. <laughs> How's your drinking days? Are you always I I finished? I stopped drinking. Yeah. You stopped drinking? Yeah. You're all right now? Yes. 
good and tell me something. Lawrence How about Turner, look at this picture of you. My Did you God. go over that heroin habit you had? I'm <laughs> Lawrence, this is a beautiful picture. Isn't that a great what picture? What a place for a pie. Oh, no, it's and not. son of a gun. Yes, he was. And you, have, you did a musical. No. One musical. Yes. Lawrence, where am I getting? I just read this in the book. I don't know where you're getting any well, of this. Well, I'm, I'm reading a book about you right now, and it says in the book that you did one musical. Am I right, Eddie Colbert? Yes. It was in the book, printed black and white, and I read it oh, last night. Oh, what's the name of the musical? The musical, it was called Dancing in the Dark. Now. I don't recall that. You don't remember those days? Are you sure you didn't do that? I never did a f okay, do you remember film the days? by that name. I was never in a film by that name. Okay. Remember those days you were driving? What? That wasn't the title. It wasn't, wasn't it? Singing in, the, uh, singing in the Dark. That's what the title was. May I tell you something? You're thinking of Fred Astaire. No, I'm not thinking of Fred Astaire. And were you also a Hans, Hanson cab driver in New York? Yes. And weren't you? Across the street from the plaza? You were a handsome cab driver at one time? I was the handsomest the cab driver. <laughs> and those days were wonderful, weren't they? I used to say, take a ride in my carriage and see my horse with the handsome behind. Going through Central Park. I didn't get that. Did they know who, did they, know who they were when they were in your cab? Did they know who they were? No. Did they know no. that Lawrence Turner? A lot of them were amnesia victims. <laughs> New York City. You spent a lot of years... I like doing that a lot because... Uh, Tell me. Well, I like children. Uh -huh. You let the kids sit up. The adults that sit in the back, and once in a while you get a young kid, let him sit up on, your, on the seat like between your right. legs and let him hold the reins and think he's driving. Uh -huh. Watch his expression. That was fun. You I like young kids, you know. You do? Yeah, it was fun to have, you know, to have the kids think he was driving and uh -huh. thrill for him. And vicarious thrill for me. I see. Tell me something, darling. How many commercials have you done? You've done a lot oh, of commercials, fiddly, haven't you? Yeah. Fiddly, D. Fiddly, D. Tell many. me. I made uh, one that only lasted a month for Jack in the Box uh -huh. when they were blowing up the clown. Uh -huh. I was the old lady that pulled up in the vintage car and stuck my head out of the window and said, what are you boys doing to the Jack in the Box clown? <laughs> and Chuck McCann says, he's going bye bye lady. And I said, but he's so cute. <laughs> and then they said, well, the food is better at the box. And they hand me a sandwich and I take a bite and I say, the food is better at the box. Uh, waste him. And they took it off after a month because it was, uh, the children were suffering traumatic experiences with that from the old lady <laughs> saying waste him. But I'm still getting a holding fee from, which is Monterey Jack uh -huh, now uh -huh. instead of Jack in the Box. Great. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I have no idea. I don't argue with them. I just take the check to the bank and put You've it been on Johnny Carson show. Where do you go after that? Oh, any place I'm asked to go. Okay. <laughs> You've been on Johnny Carson. Next time Carson's you get show. a check, call me. Yeah. yeah. You've been on Johnny Carson, yeah. Merv Griffith. Have you been on Merv? No, Haven't I've never you? been on Merv's show, but I've been on uh, Mike Douglas. Douglas. Show yes, and I see. I, uh, I'm due back on Johnny's show uh -huh. Uh -huh. some of these first days. I hope, hope, hope. And I want to go to New York to do a late night. Letterman. I think you'd be fabulous. On I know Letterman Paul Schaefer real well uh -huh, because uh -huh. he was in a pilot uh, thing that we did that didn't last. <laughs> tell You're me at the top. Remember tell me that? About, yes, of course. It was wonderful. Greg Evigan yeah, and Paul Schaefer. Yeah. Do you do singing still? Well, let's put it this let's way. I don't sing for diddly, but uh, I can still sing a fast tune because you don't have to do anything except uh -huh. wiggle a little. Uh -huh. And but to sing a real good song like I think I used to be able to, like Sophisticated Lady or Body and Soul, stuff like that. Great song. I don't have the voice to do that uh -huh. anymore. Uh -huh. So I sing uh, A Good Man's Hard to Find and uh -huh. uh, I'm in Love with You, Honey, and Exactly Like You and stuff like that where you just wiggle and, uh -huh. uh, you know. Would you like to do a musical? Oh, heavens to Betsy. I don't think I could ho hold up for a musical. You That's don't think uh, so? every night. Yes. That's hard. Isn't well, it? I don't know. I, I don't really yeah. think I'd do very well in a, in a musical. Lawrence, tell me something. Scott Brady, your brother, how many brothers did you have? How many do you have? I had two. They both passed away. Scott died only about three or four months ago, and then my younger brother, the youngest of the three of us, died two years ago. His name was Edward. By the way, he was in... He was in the film. He was in the hoodlum with me. I yes. My brother in the film. Uh-huh. Edwin... Uh, uh, Edward Tierney. Uh-huh. Is he, uh, is he? No, he's not. No. no picture. Who is this girl? Uh, now, I'm just trying to figure out this girl right here in this picture of you. I don't know. It's not a, it's, I can't think. It's not Lois Lane no, no. or something. No. 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 
Okay, I just wonder. But I love this picture of you, my darling. This little picture of you right here. I think that's a great that's picture. That's real me there. That's real you, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That's a great picture of Crazy you. Crazy old lady. Yeah, you're having fun, aren't you? Oh, yeah. It seems yeah. like you're having a lot of fun. I'm having a ball. Well, you when are. it ceases to be fun, then I'll quit. What other commercials have you done? Oh, Lord, I've done uh, Heinz Homestyle Gravy and... Uh, uh-huh. Um, and... Uh, a telephone commercial years ago. You were on Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Oh, yeah. Tell me about Right it. after this thing I did with it, uh, of Norman Lear, uh -huh. where I thought my career had gone down the drain. Right. I cleaned that up, didn't I? You certainly. <laughs> and uh, right after that, he put me on Mary Hartman. I did two different characters on that. Uh -huh. And uh, he's given me an awful lot of work on his sitcoms and different Duke of stuff. Hazzards. Duke of Hazzards. And how about Fall Guy? Are you a yeah. regular in Fall Guy now? Well, I'm a recurring part, yes, uh -huh. a recurring part. I play the new bail bond person, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and uh, I'm very rough on it. Are you really? Yeah, because uh, an old woman, if she's going to be a bail bond person, she better be a little rough because they get into some scrapes. Yes. Uh -huh. So I, uh, in the first episode I made, I called, uh, I had a line I was supposed to say, uh, he said, they've got Jody and Howie, and I was supposed to, I was supposed to say, what are we waiting for? And uh, I thought that didn't sound mean enough, so I said, so what are we waiting for, Dodo? And they left it in. Uh -huh. <laughs> I called him Majors of Dodo, and they left it in. Well, what are you going to do? What kind of guy is he to work for? Very nice. Is he? Very nice to me. Nobody allowed on the set, no visitors on the set, but uh, uh -huh. that's understandable. So I mean, no visitors some, on the set? Some people don't allow them, you know. They don't want anybody that isn't supposed to be there. There's so many there anyway, they don't know who's doing what to who. Lawrence, tell me something. In your day, did you have a lot of visitors on the set? In my day? Yeah. Well, in, I mean, it in 1940 like, and the 40s like and the 50s. I'm talking about... walking around a cemetery. Uh, yes, sadly enough, I had too many visitors on the set. I didn't know that you could ask if you were playing the lead in the film, and I used to, I used to bring all the tourists onto the set where I was working. And the tourists? Did they? Yeah, they'd bring uh -huh. a lot of them in, you know. Uh -huh. They'd have babies with them, they'd be dropping rattles and bottles. God, you do a scene, it sometimes takes about two or three minutes, which is a long time before, on camera. Uh -huh. And then you'd have to cut it, somebody would drop, there'd be a noise, or some kid would start crying. Oh, I see. And, uh... I just got the name. It's called Singing in the Dark, 1956. It was not a musical. Well, in the well tell me about that picture. What was it? Oh, I will. Please. It was a film that they did with a, a Jewish cantor, religious cantor named Moshe Oisha, mm -hmm. who was an awfully charming guy, and his wife was too, and they, they had uh, put a picture together. We talked to him into making this picture. Uh -huh. He was the star. I see. I played the bad guy. Uh-huh. And he was such a nice guy, and they kept coming in and asking him for more checks. He was signing away. I hope he got some of it back somehow. I don't uh -huh. know whether the picture ever did any good, but that poor guy went for a lot of money. I think he was set up, you know. And you did a comedy, too. But he was so nice, Moshe. Was Oisha. he? Yeah, real nice gentleman. You did a comedy. Go ahead. You know, apropos talking about nice guys, <clears throat> the guy that really got me started heavily in the business was Val Luton. I... Uh, <clears throat> was on the contract to RKO, and at the end of six months, they decided to drop me. And he flipped, because I played the first leading role I ever played in one of his films, and then another one immediately after it. Then when they dropped the option, he squawked. He said, uh -huh. Val Luton was a really fine gentleman. He made the cat people pictures, uh -huh. a lot of horror pictures, and uh -huh. he brought RKO out of the red. He saved them with his pictures, because they made money, and RKO was really in a bind. How long were you with RKO? I was there for six months the first time, mm -hmm. and after I left, <clears throat> uh, I went around to various other students. They went back after eight months to RKO, and I was there five years. Five years. So altogether, about five and a half years. Oh, I see. Tell me about Mama Loves Mama well, Loves Papa. That was Papa. just a Leon Errol short. That's a, that's a comedy, right? It was a Leon Errol short film. Remember, he used to make those little short films. Right, right, Papa. right, 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 right. Did that with Elaine Riley and uh -huh. Leon Errol, of course. Do you like to do comedy? Him? Yes, I do. I feel that you do. I don't yeah. know why, but I just feel... Uh, because you're not that serious. So no, I just, like to do comedy. You do like to do comedy. Have you done any theater? Sadly enough, the first film I did, the bad, Dillinger was the big... I mean, the first leading role. And they think you... you well, I don't know. It's typecasting there. That's what there. they keep casting See, they there. keep casting. Am I correct, darling? Right. It becomes tough to get out of that, uh, that mole. But you, you do a lot of theater, don't you? Uh, I've done, you know, yeah. not a lot, but I've done But it. you've done 
Yeah, I played Inherit the Wind. Do With you know who? Who's that? Who's in it? Who's in it? Who was in it? Yeah, Inherit the Wind. The oh, play. I can't give it out. There were 32 people in the cast. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. I play the lead in it. It's the story of the Stopes Evolution Trial. I play Clarence Darrow. I see. I did a lot of film, a lot of uh, stage. You're born in Brooklyn, are you? Yes. You were born in Brooklyn. I see. You're a New York boy. You Dirty Poiple boy. Is that where you're from? <laughs> and where are you born? They say you can leave Iowa. Brooklyn, but Brooklyn will never leave you. Ah. That's where the tall corn grows. Right. Oh, Iowa, yes. Uh, Tell me about that. I was telling me. her I used it to does. go with Donna Reed's sister, LaVon Mollinger. Uh -huh. Donna Reed's real name is uh, uh -huh. Mollinger. Uh -huh. And uh, she, they're from Iowa. Uh -huh. yeah, I don't know what part, though. I live down on the Mississippi there. I'm from Illinois. Originally. Between Keokuk and Fort Madison. Uh -huh. Originally Little Illinois, town. and that's where I'm from too. And uh, what part of uh, Iowa? No, Rockford, what I part worked, of Iowa? Yes. I worked in an upholstered sewer there once. You did an upholstered sewer. Upholstered now that's one sewer. <laughs> that's what I call. Where is that, darling? Bars. What part of Iowa? Ever? I'm from the side. You know that little thing that's down there on Iowa? That little gizmo thing that goes down. Well, you I'm were down born in, in the, there. In the town of Gizmo. Yeah, now Mont Rose. Giz you were Miss Gizmo. I Nancy. was across the river from Nauvoo. <laughs> <laughs> where were you born? What city? Uh, okay. Mont Rose, Iowa. Mont Rose. Beautiful. Cross the river from Nauvoo, Illinois. No. <laughs> so there, dude. Lawrence Turney, you are smoking a cigarette on the set. You yeah, know that. that You're, yeah. Well, that's. Sorry, a, I forget. Let's okay. not make a speech. Okay, okay. we won't make excuses. But anyway, I do. I do want to thank you both for coming this afternoon. I really do. And it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Oh, it's nice to have been here with you. Isn't she a lovely lady? Yes. I think Crazy she's a delightful old lady. lady. As as she heck? gets another one and of those what's, checks, what's, I'm going to meet her and we're going yeah. out. What is your plans <laughs> in the future now? What is happening with Just you? Just whatever Could happens to me is okay. you have anything coming up? No, no. Just the the uh, recurring role on Fall Guy is um, I, I'm going to do a, some game shows if uh -huh. they'll have me. I love games. I heard shows. you, you are. learning lines. You make some money. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I heard you are in some game shows now, aren't you? Well, no, not right at the moment, but uh -huh. I'm I'm going in for a pilot on uh -huh. uh, the uh -huh. middle of this month uh -huh. sometime. And Larry, what are you doing now? What's your uh, anything new coming up for you? I'm about to read for a play at the Mark Taper Theater. Uh -huh. Great. I don't know the name of it yet. I just Great. Got it on a Sunday. And I understand you're changing agents too. No, I'm not. You're not changing. Just the uh, commercial agent. Commercial agent. Get that. I see. Oh. I don't know my theatrical. My uh, theatrical uh -huh. agent's fine. But you look wonderful, Larry. I must say. Thank you. You need glasses. And you know, Larry, there's a new place. I must tell you both. There's a new place in town called Theodore's Cafe. You go there, don't you, Larry? Once in a while. I met you. Theodore. That's right. And it's where all the actors are hanging out now from the new Schwabs of Hollywood. That's Where's where it located? It's in uh, West Hollywood. Mm. And it's a new place for all the actors. And they're just, Shelley Winters goes there, they all go there, and they're having a good time. Mm. It's good food there, too, matter of fact. It's wonderful. And, uh, but anyway, I'm Sounds so like happy go I met, I met. You're going to go in there and get a free meal. I'm so happy I met my friend Lawrence Turney Dellinger. Isn't that great? I love that movie. It was one of my favorite movies. They made so many of them, didn't they? they How made, many? They made two. They made two. Who were the others? Quite a lot of years later, they did one with Warren Oates playing Dillinger. Warren Oates, yes. He, he played Dillinger. Yeah, he passed away now. He was a nice guy. No. Was he? That yes. lady in red. Uh, no, they called the picture in Dillinger. Theater, in front of the theater. That uh -huh. really happened. Yes. Uh, they called red in front of the uh huh. That's it. But did that really happen? That's a true story. Uh, yes, except the lady of red was not the one who set him up. The one who set him up for this uh -huh. was uh, a whore, madam. A whore? A whore, madam. Yes, I hear you. Who made a deal with the uh, immigration authorities uh -huh. who were about to deport her? Uh -huh. so she was here on a funny visa. Uh huh. And uh, she thought that that would get her off and not be deported. She was later put in. But she set it up and just sent some girl with her. She was the one who Welcome again to another 30 minutes with the low who puts a high in your viewing entertainment. 
Appearing for us before our cameras today is an actress whose spryness and enthusiasm belie her actual years. A former star of different strokes and filthy rich, she is currently to be seen with Lee Majors in The Fall Guy. I speak of the ever young and irresistible Nidra Voles. Also with us today is a man who, although not known as a film critic, will tell you unequivocally that Manhattan melodrama was a deadly movie. That's right, he's the actor who played the title role in and rose to unequivocal stardom as Dillinger, the one and only Lawrence Tierney. And now, here's someone who would have preferred had the cowboy hero been named Skip Along Cassidy, your man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. A band singer. I can't believe you were a band singer. I was young once, you, you know. You were a band course, singer, though. Of course. How many years ago was that? Oh, I hesitate to mention that. Really? Oh, it was 40, 50 years ago. I don't know, 50, 60, maybe. I don't know. Nidra Vols, tell me, how long really have you been in the business, show business? Really? Well, I was carried on the stage by my mother when I was six weeks old. And I'll soon be, uh, well, I'm not soon be 78. I'm 77 now. Next June, I'll be 78. Uh-huh. 78. Mm -hmm. God bless you, darling. That's wonderful. I'm having a ball. Yeah, but I understand right? that you were in a play in Upland, California a few years ago. Yeah. And there was a gentleman by the name of Dale Garrett. Yeah, Garrick. S Garrick? Yes. He discovered you. Well, uh, I... Did he or not? No, I don't think that's exactly the way it happened, uh -huh. Skip. But would you like me to tell you how it happened? Yes, I would. Well, as a matter of fact, there was a young gentleman working in the little theater there in Upland. Uh-huh. And he had Dale Garrick as his agent. Well, the man that I worked for is Mark Shipley. He has the gallery theater there. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he liked what I did, and he gave me some really good parts, comedy. And uh, I got quite well established, and Mark thought that I had potential, could maybe make a couple of bucks in commercials or uh -huh. some little uh -huh. thing, you know. So he got this young man to take me in to Dale's office uh -huh. for an interview. Nice. And of course, it wasn't too difficult because I did have a background of theatrics, and uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. that's why Dale took me and in. He and he signed you up, and, and but Norman, uh, I understand Norman, Norman Lear is the one really signed you up. Well, actually, Norman came into my life in the 75 uh -huh. when I was doing a bit on uh, Good Times, which, of course, is my favorite uh -huh. program. I always watched it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was rather uptight uh, between shows. You know, we do two takes. Uh, we do a show at 5.30 and then one at 8 o'clock right, with right. a live audience and all that. And I was sort of uptight because uh, I was real thrilled about network and with these wonderful people that I was going to work with and uh -huh. it was so exciting uh -huh. and so between shows you go down in the green room or whatever mm -hmm. and they bring in food and they have notes and that type of thing and uh, I couldn't have eaten I probably would have been sick you see I see so I was just nibbling on some celery or something and this man came up and he said uh, you're doing a, a terrific job for us I said well thank you sir and he said, no, I mean it. We're going to have you back. I said, well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> and when he left, uh, fortunately, he knew I was kidding. Because when he left, I said to one of the fellows, who was that guy? And he said, that's Norman Lear. I said, uh-oh, oh, there goes my career. Mm. But that but was he signed so. you up. Oh, yes. He's, a, he's a great Panther person. Uh -huh. you but know. your first movie was 10. Yeah, that was... Tell me about yeah. that. Blake Edwards. Blake Edwards. I had a wonderful interview with Blake. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't really think that the scene was all that funny. I mean, it was, eh, the dog running out of the room, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> was it? But what the old lady did, I think, was very funny. Uh -huh. But when I walked in Blake's office for the audition, the interview, he said, well, to begin with, you're much too young for the part. I said, I'm too young for the part? Too young, right. I've never been too young for anything. <laughs> he said, well, we can take care of that with makeup. And then he <clears> said... You don't have any dialogue, I just want you to shuffle across the floor. And he mm -hmm. showed me how he wanted me to shuffle. Uh -huh. And I said, Blake, I've walked like that all the time. He said, oh, good. Then he told me what the rest of the skit was, which if you saw the picture, you know what the old girl did. Right, and the right. dog ran out of the room and so bit. And uh, he told me what the rest of the skit was. And I said, Blake, I, I'm not sure I can do that on cue. Mm -hmm. He said, well, we'll fake it. I said, oh, good. 
Us. But it was, that's what happened. Nidra Vols. Now, what name, what kind of name is that, Nidra? Well, uh, Vols is a German name. That's my married name. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And my maiden name was Nidra Gordnier, which uh -huh. is French and German. And the name Nidra came from a book uh -huh. uh, by George Bar McCutcheon, an old writer. Uh, an old writer. Uh, but you did a movie, Dust in the Lust, Lust in, in the Dust. The, yes, I Yeah, I want to show that. Just yes. I love that picture. Look at this yes. picture of my name was Edna. They call me Big Ed. Big Ed. Yeah. I was Can oldest you get that hooker and Shelly Verde. Of, and see, I think that's a great Oldest but, Hooker and Shelly Verde. The oldest hooker. You played mm -hmm. a hooker in that? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Did you really? Yeah. And that was with Tab Hunter mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Caesar Romero. Lainey Kazan. But you have Divine. A, Divine, yes. Oh, yeah. Funny. Was he, is he funny? Oh, yes. Yeah. Is he? But tell me something about your new movie out. You have a new one out, Moving... Moving Violations. Well, it's been out. It came out about the same time, Lust in the Dust. Oh, it did, uh-huh. But uh, they both disappeared sort of fast, uh, which I, I don't make any explanations about those uh -huh. things, because uh -huh. I don't know. But Moving Violations was a PG-13. Uh-huh. And um, if it hadn't been for me, it wouldn't have to be a, even a 13. It wouldn't? Why would nope. it? Why wouldn't it? Well, be? because I said the nastiest thing in the whole show. You he did. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, when they put it on television, uh -huh. they will use my version of the lines in the scene because it's permissible on television. You know I'm going to bring to the, I want you to meet one of America's great bad men. I mean, he was Dillinger, the bad? original. Yes, he was really, really bad. He was the, actually the Humphrey Bogart of his day. Ah. He was really considered the Humphrey Bogart of the 40s, I should say. Humphrey a rotten Bogart. guy, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's real a real rotten guy. Yeah, real rotten, no, but he's a sweetheart. Lawrence <laughs> Turney, how are you, Lawrence? How do you do? Larry, may I call you Larry? I guess you're How have you that. been? My God, Scott Brady's brother this is. Remember Scott Brady? Oh, yes, I do. Lawrence okay. Turney. And, and did you know that Lawrence Turney does Shakespeare? He recites Shakespeare? No, Nobody knows that about not you. Not now, though. No, but you do. Now, how did you get into Shakespeare? I didn't get into Shakespeare. Well, why? Okay, you didn't get into it. Tell me, uh, how do, uh, why do you recite Shakespeare? I don't. Where did you hear me do this? Someone told me. Well, I know a few quotations. Most people do. Most actors know a little of it. In fact, yes. most people who read very much know a little Shakespeare. Lawrence In fact, that's what made him so popular. He used so many popular expressions. Lawrence Turney, tell me, what have you been doing with yourself? You just got a new... Uh... Well, I've been doing a lot of TV recently. I just finished uh, Hill Street Blues, and uh -huh. before that I did a uh, Tales of the Dark Side. That's right, you did. Uh, with Phyllis Diller. Uh -huh. and, when is that coming out? before that I did, uh, right after that, between the two, I did uh, Remington Steel, neither of which has come out yet. Hill Street Blues has shown, uh -huh. but the other two haven't. Before that, I did a film with, uh... Well, well, they used to have headlines in the paper that you used to grab cab drivers. No, that's a lot of nonsense. Is it really? If somebody is. I don't know. I just... I never had anything like that. I never had a headline like that in the paper. It didn't? No. Well... You're, you're confusing your, your memoir, your memory of things. Are you all right now? I used to drink a lot. Yes, that's... And I used to get attacked by a lot of people in bars who would see me in these heavy TV roles. That's right. Uh, motion picture roles at that time. And they thought you were the Dillinger. You know, you well, kept... Well, they'd come up to you and say, you're not as tough as you are in film. Right. And with a few drinks, you don't have the discretion to walk away from them. You just say, well, you know... Yeah, look at you here. Look at you here. This is the hoodlum, one of the great movies. That's you. What year was this taken in? I don't know, isn't it there? It's there, isn't it? Here's another picture. Oh, this was right. made, we made this, this in 1804. Look at that, you there. That's a yeah. great picture of you. Yeah, this that's is the same picture. Is this all you got? No, on? I have not. I have the kill or be killed. Yeah, that's a picture I did. Well, in let's, that. let's show this on camera first. Look at that. Lawrence Turney. That was in... Um, Where is this? We did it in Portugal, Lisbon, around the area. But you made monogram studios, the King Brothers. I mean, you were responsible for the monogram pictures. Now... Well, Dillinger was made at Monogram, is that correct? Yeah, Monogram, Allied Artists, I don't know. Tell me about those days of Hollywood. Of monogram. What do you want to know? I, just tell me. What's well, really Hollywood out, really like in those days? The town wasn't as densely populated as it is now. I came out on July 4th, 1943, under contract to RKO. That's, now, let me get right. 1943. Mm -hmm. Now, you were in New York City at the mm -hmm. RKO. You went with some young man at RKO in New York City. No, I'll tell a, you that story. Tell it's, me that story. Well, I was working as a lifeguard at the time, <clears throat> and I had been asked by someone to do some modeling, and I got into that <clears throat> with the John Robert Powers Agency. Mm -hmm. 
This one day we were... Uh, you were with a friend of yours. Well, I'm going to tell you. Go ahead. We were sent to go on an interview for a TV commercial, for a commercial, modeling commercial. Go ahead. <clears throat> and they wanted the two of us to go down, a guy named George Schaefer, a real nice guy. And he said, we have about two hours to get there. Let's share a cab while we go downtown to the interview. I said, fine. Then he said, by the way, since we have the time, we can go get coffee. <clears throat> and he said, uh, would you mind coming over to RKO Studios with me? Not, not the studios, but the offices. I'm working on getting a film contract. And he said, I just want to I have an appointment there. Uh -huh. So I went over with him, and I sat in the outer office. And when this Marion Robertson, who was a very nice woman, Dino De Laurentiis in North Carolina, which is on the streets now. It's on the theaters now. What's the name of it? It's called The Silver Bullet. Oh, great movie, yes. The Stephen King thing uh -huh. about werewolves. Mm -hmm. And uh, and just bef uh, right after that, I did uh, Prince Cesano with uh, John Huston. Yes, was tell me about John. Pleasure. I'd wanted to work with him a long time. I'd always admired him. I think he's one of the best American directors. In fact, best directors in the world, I uh -huh, think. Uh -huh. I think he's a terrific director. He is a good director. Yeah, I had I Michael Parks and on a the show. Nice the same nice thing. guy and very easy to work with and nice. Is he really easy to work I with? I worked with a lot. I worked with DeMille, of course, he was easy to get along with, too. But uh, I found Houston a pleasure to work with. Do you think Hollywood has changed? And the picture just won a, the Golden uh, Lion Award in the Venice Film Festival. I just talked to Angelica Houston, uh, right. who's in the film with uh, Jack Nicholson. Uh, put these on her, mm -hmm. and uh, she just came back from Venice. Uh -huh. And I talked to her today, and she told me they won the Golden Lion Award for the best Did they picture really? How at that festival. Great. And she plays an excellent part in it. She does an excellent job. Uh -huh. Everyone talked about her before. Did you see it? No, I haven't. <clears> well, I heard it's great. She really surprised me and everybody else. I, uh -huh. She really, uh, she plays a tough Italian. T what do you play? What do you play in it, John? Uh, I play a police lieutenant. You play a police lieutenant. I see. I see. But you're always playing those tough guys. But Houston was, uh, oh, I play what they cast me in. San Quentin, that was, what, done, what year was that done? In 19, San, uh, uh, The Man of San Quentin? About 49 or something like that. Was it 47? No, 49. 49? And how about Born to Kill? Who was in that, Born to uh, Kill? Claire Trevor, Audrey Long, Philip Terry. Claire Trevor was in Born and to I'll Kill? I'll never forget this wonderful old woman who'd been in films for many, many years, Esther Howard. Esther? She was wonderful. She played an, an all really old woman in the picture. Uh-huh. And uh, she'd come in every morning with a with a big thermos bottle of martinis uh -huh. <laughs> to uh -huh. last it during the day, and she was a lot of fun to work with. She'd been around many, many years as a young girl. I'd seen old-time films, and I saw her walking around as a showgirl. Uh -huh. And she was so so nice to work with. There was a lot of rumors around Hollywood about you. Now tell me about those rumors. Here they go Lawrence. with their rumors. Yeah, well, you know. First of all, let me let, let me let me preface whatever we're going to talk about go by ahead. telling you that rumor and gossip very rarely spoils a good story by sticking to the truth or any way near it. Right, go ahead. Uh, what's the rumors? The rumors that you oh, yeah. were not a, you were the bad boy of Hollywood. I wasn't, well, what did I do bad, name it. Well, cab drivers, uh, wherever you no, went. you're going to you start hallucinating. No, no we're not going to hallucinate. I just want to know, I, let's get the record straight. Well, what's uh, cab drivers? 